Hey, it's Darren Dion, National Chief Advocate for Disabled Veterans, Police, and Firemen. Also, TV actor, as a TV and movie actor. But today, I had a concept I created, a creative concept for a television show called Finding Justice. A lot of you who know me from YouTube and TV and my advocacy all around the country, the creative concept couldn't move forward. That an appeals court. Which you've, uh, I formed the appeals court in 2010, and this new one, Finding Justice, which stars me, National Advocate for Disabled, and attorney Elliot Fasina, uh, who's also a former Marine. The premise of the show is pretty much like the premise of the organization, but we're not going to just help disabled because it's about finding justice. The Americans with Disabilities Act is the justice for disabled. But you got companies out there, you got mom and pop business stores. There aren't many of those left because corporate America has taken over this country and they've come from other countries to take over our country, which is a problem. If you go into a location, like you know, we used to be in a place in Queens and now it's, uh, they used to call it Flushing, and, and, and now it's uh, Little Asia. I mean, this is not right. All around our country, it's no more an American standard. What's the American standard? Life, liberty, and pursuit. It's been convoluted, our laws and bylaws of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence have independently, by the elected officials we put in, are taking those liberties away. Our forefathers knew this, and that was the reason for the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. Some things will never change, like due process. But anyway, we're up against those challenges. So because funding is difficult, we're going to use YouTube. Everybody else is going out there on YouTube and doing fine. We want to make this a real television show, and it's called Finding Justice. So you're getting the first knowledge of this new concept that was formed in actually Valentine's Day 2013 is when I formed it but funding didn't come in timely. So we're going to use YouTube and we're going to bring you case by case with video cameras showing you how the American concept is being broken down one family at a time. That's horrible. You know when the Constitution as an American, you're supposed to protect the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. This, these are domestic enemies against our way of life. And they masquerade it by law firms. We're up against a law firm now. Sheila, what's that uh, law firm's name? Uh, Hold on a second. I'll be right back. Uh, let me get that leading paper. Here's the file. We're up against the, uh, oh here, so you can see them. Look at their name. Remember that name. They're criminal attorneys based in Long Island dealing with properties in the Bronx that house elderly senior disabled citizens. And they try and rob them of their rent controlled rights. They don't deal with the needs of the apartment that you may have seen last year or two years ago. I made a few videos in my mother-in-law's apartment. Now it's our apartment as the successors at 5900 Arlington Avenue, Bronx, New York, our apartment under the Rent Stabilizations Act. We are the successors. But that's another issue. But right now, uh, our first target is the SAG Awards and the Screen Actors Guild. Because the SAG Awards is kind of like a subsidiary of SAG because it gives awards and nominees an opportunity to advance, I guess, or commend their career by these awards and achievements. But here's the problem. The disabled actors are excluded from that event. We've had a five-year discussion. After their invite and accommodation once that they made for me five years ago, they refused to do any more. Jennifer and Jeff Margolis, well, Jennifer, Jeff was a, a nice guy. They did make the accommodations. But the Americans with Disabilities Act is clear. You can't stop once you start. Their chief counsel, Nicole, will use her first name. You can go online and find all these people. 
the SAG Awards this year is on January 25th. She deliberately, Nicole, chief counsel, okay? Her identity is chief counsel. Her name is irrelevant because you know why? She's in her official capacity acting on the desires of the SAG Award panel that puts this show together. And they don't want disabled actors there. They don't want it because it means they have to section off by federal mandate in the Shriners Hall, which already should be accommodating. Are you getting this? This is finding justice. We will find justice, justice will prevail, and those that prevented justice will be dealt with civilly. You've heard that expression, if you can't beat them, join them. We're gonna beat them, and we're gonna join them in a way that they've never imagined, that they never imagined, because we're gonna come through that door. And we're going to find justice because justice is there. How is justice there? They have a rule of a 25% mandate of allocating that event for that night. And just so you know, their chief counsel doesn't consider actors part of the general public. I don't know what she thinks they are. Maybe she thinks we're aliens. And uh, maybe you have to belong to that club, an alien, to be part of or to get accommodations because she doesn't understand Title Three, Title One, Title Two. She doesn't understand the concept of the ADA is to accommodate, facilitate, include, not exclude, and don't try and hide behind something else saying it's the same thing. They would call that subterfuge, making it the same but not the same. Uh, to defeat the allegation of discrimination they would say that it doesn't apply to them. It applies to any place of a public setting where members of the public or groups of, a group of actors in a general setting for the SAG Awards is a federal mandate that those people within that setting, within my union, Screen Actors Guild, SAG after, that I can join the general lottery and they wouldn't be ready to accommodate my physical disabilities. And they're saying that's okay. It's not. It's the law. You can't do it. She refused. This They tried to delay me, so I couldn't get the lawsuit out to put it in order to show cause in place to stop the award show. And you know what? It may be better, because they could have voluntarily did what was right after this five-year discussion and followed and complied with the law. She said, well, we, we, we welcome... Here's, and I quote... Nicole says, no, we want disabled actors to join the lottery. How would you know they're disabled? You understand? You wouldn't know a disabled actor because you're telling him to go into a general setting. The rule is to put him in a general setting and not let him feel different from the setting, even though the location has been made accommodated to the need of the individual, but in that general setting. So when somebody tells you, so this is part of finding justice, Around the, around the United States, you may encounter this. It doesn't have to be with just the SAG Awards. If you go on our website at www.adaadvocates.com, you're going to see or Google SAG Awards Darren Dion Aquino, and it will come up. We won't stop. We're relentless in our pursuit for justice because me and Elio, we are the new Batman and Robin of justice. We will bring justice, we will find justice, justice will prevail, because we just ain't anybody. We're American citizens with a right, a promise, and a constitution that backs it up. These Nicoles are dime a dozen people. They come and they go, council members for these organizations. But where is the justice? Imagine a lawyer who goes to school and tries to defeat the constitution, the very one that they take refuge under to become lawyers. They say that promise is good for them, but not for you. And they do that by action. I'm telling you, we will find justice. Nicole and the SAG Awards do not want disabled actors there. Jennifer said specifically to me, and she tried to deny it in a tape, an audio tape, present in front of the deputy chief on a telephone call at 8 o'clock New York time, 5 o'clock uh, <coughs> California time. We were at Rayo's restaurant when the phone call came and I had it on speaker and everybody heard her say, if I have to put 25% disabled in the audience, I won't have the SAG Awards anymore. I won't do the lottery. 
she blatantly, outright, with it as an act of hatred. It amounts to hatred when you say you don't want an individual there. That sums up the hatred. The SAG Awards willfully and hatefully ex excluded us from this process. And their drawing methods are not correct. There's no witness to it. You have to take their word for it. A box with, because they have friends and family when it's set up for union members. I was at the location, there was a table next to me with one other disabled individual in the facility. I was saying hi to my friends on SVU, Marishka, Ted Kotchoff, the executive producer, people that were there that I haven't seen for a while. Because in every walk of life there's some sort of corruption, nepotism, it's there. So we're going to find justice against the SAG Awards. Know that the SAG Awards is not for those that it represents. They, have, they hide under the refuge of our union saying they're doing this for the members. They've excluded us this year once again. So that would be six years of exclusion, which we will seek damages for those six years of exclusion because the year that counts is the year that they stopped having me come because they didn't have a separate lottery for disabled, because the facility does not accommodate. They choose not to. The law says they have to. And they're trying to draw a new line in the sand saying it doesn't apply. The ADA applies to everyone. It's the balance of restoration to the disabled individual of bringing their freedom back. The freedom that was taken from them by excluding them from the very right they have from the groups or groups of people that belong together or form groups like an actor's union that gather in a public, a public setting to have an award ceremony that includes disabled actors but excludes them in that practice of that event that they have yearly. They don't have a section delegated, designated, facilitating inclusion for disabled actors. They'll tell you different. Well, until next case, that one is going to see, you're going to see that in federal court. That's going to be brought here. We're going to bring it here and make them come to New York. Because our fight for justice brings everybody into our arena. Because they defeated the purpose and principles by their selfish, hateful acts against people with special needs that had a right to participate, but by their selfish willful acts. They've excluded disabled members. There's film footage. If you watch the SAG Awards, watch and see. There are no allocated sections. They can still save time, put a public notice to the union and say, first come, first serve of disabled actors and the section is numbered how many seats are there. It's the way it should be done. It's the way it's done. The other place that's going to be challenged is the presidential debate. They'll be brought in the same time. Why? That's already in court right now in the Eastern District. So, Nicole at the SAG Awards, Chief Counsel, send your concerns. Send your concerns if you're a disabled, not so famous actor, but the union card that you hold says you're just as entitled as those actors. They open the floor to have the overflow of union members, but they want a select group. They don't want disabled ones. So this is Darren Dion Aquino coming to you live from my apartment in the Bronx, which I am the successor, me and my wife, that uh, we're up against that battle with that law firm. So if you're out there and you're seeking justice, you'll find it with Advocates for Disabled Americans. Remember, go to our website at www.adaadvocates.com and don't look at don't let lawyers change your lifestyle. Change their direction and remind them of the law. You will find justice with us. Remember, Elio Ficina and Darren Aquino. Darren Dion Aquino, my acting name. Go to our YouTube, see what's going on, and look forward to the new show, Finding Justice. We're the Batman and Robin that will go from state to state incognito, with video cameras, we're going to expose Citibank for depriving, also TD Bank. They've been in major class action lawsuits for depriving and cheating people with these overdrafts. And they still do it. There's no, they let you overdraft so that they can railroad you 
and there's no cap to it. They took from the nonprofit account over four hundred dollars, <throat> and that debit card that acts as a credit debit card, they don't allow you to dispute it, which is another infringement on rights and banking laws. But remember, if you're disabled and having difficulty, or you're a disabled actor in California, Pennsylvania, Washington, you're covered around the United States, not just the state in which you live. So stay tuned, stick with us, you know, send your concerns, your thoughts, leave a comment on this, because it's finding justice in a state, in your state, our state, any state in the union that's lacking justice, call us. We'll come and help. Have a great day. I'm Darren Dion.